Hello everyone, and welcome to my Days of Our Lives Today channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. To wish Theo a safe journey home to South Africa, Chad went over to the Salem Inn. He was shocked to discover that the trip had been postponed because Lonnie was gone. Theo said, I just called Claire. She said she hopes she could be here to help. And while I'm sure you wish she were here for support, you do have me, right? Chad answered. When Theo begged for a diversion, Chad began complaining about the one drawback of residing in one of Salem's most upscale apartment buildings, having Alex as a neighbor. Don't misunderstand me, though. I'm not in any danger from him. I mean, Stephanie has already decided who she wants to date. I'm simply not sure whether this fool will ever receive the message, Chad said. When Alex arrived at Chad and Stephanie's apartment, he discovered just the latter neighbor there. Alex stoically complained that it was a bummer that Chad wasn't around as he confidently entered the flat after handing Stephanie the robe. Why the sudden increase in intrusive behavior? Are you genuinely oblivious of how annoying you are? Or are you deliberately attempting to be a jerk? Stephanie remonstrated. Alex answered, I thought I was simply being a good neighbor. But yes, now I do see that I really stepped over the line, Alex said. Maybe it's because I'm envious, Alex said. We won't just be ex-lovers. We'll also be ex-friends if you keep doing what you're doing, Stephanie pleaded. In the future, Alex made a commitment to uphold Stephanie's boundaries. You and I have basically been getting along just fine. And Chad and I have been dating for a while. So why do you think this is coming up now? Stephanie questioned. Maybe because I've now seen you two move in together. Take that next big step. And it's driving home to me that I'll never have what you guys have. Alex reasoned. You will eventually meet someone who is ideal for you, Stephanie prophesied. Stephanie gave Alex a hug as Chad entered the apartment. I don't know about all that, but the only thing that's important to me right now is having your friendship, Alex said. Alex was pushed away from Stephanie by Chad, who then began to yell. Stephanie advised, It's not what you think. I believe that he forced himself on you because he won't accept no for an answer. Chad yelled. Alex's confusion was resolved by Stephanie, making Chad feel foolish for reacting inappropriately. Alex said, I am rooting for you guys, before bidding Stephanie and Chad farewell and running off. After learning that Lonnie was missing, Eli hurried back to Salem and immediately hurried over to the Price apartment to see if Paulina had any fresh information. Nothing. Paulina complained. Eli, who shared Paulina's concern that something horrible had happened, likewise suspected foul play, but held out hope that Lonnie was still donning an ankle monitor and would thus be simple to find. While waiting for an ambulance to arrive at the pier, U.S. Marshal Sam Girard discovered a syringe. However, Rafe and Jada both refused to accept that Lani had merely overdosed. Lani mumbled, Daddy, throughout the discussion. When John called from Los Angeles to say that Abby was still alive but was being held captive somewhere, and that Whitley was the kidnapper, Marlena was still at the hospital with Kayla. Whitley hauled a large item into the Kane apartment's living room while Abby observed in confusion, despite the fact that it is summer, you can never be too warm, right? Whitley shrugged as he talked to Abe. Abe's lap was filled with three plush kitties that Whitley had just taken. Whitley said, How I found all of you that dreadful, terrible day. What the heck are you talking about? Abe answered. Whitley ignored Abe's question and cast a quick peek at his cell phone before seeing that Marlena had just called. Is everything okay? Whitley shrugged again as Abe questioned, and she put down the phone. Despite signs that Abe was already under the influence of medication, Whitley pounced with a syringe. Did I really need that? Abe objected. Whitley replied, I just don't want you to feel any pain. Abe strained to stay awake, still interested in the large contraption Whitley had been tinkering with earlier, a propane-powered space heater. Whitley admitted, I keep thinking about that day when I left you all by yourself. Whitley added, for a long time, 
That was all I could think about, how reckless I was, how I failed you. And it weighed so heavily on me. I didn't think I could handle it. But now I suppose God has given me a second chance. Whitley said, to make sure that you're never alone, to go where we'll always be together for all eternity, and then opened the propane tank valve, causing A.B. to notice a peculiar new smell in the flat. When Lani showed up in the hospital for treatment of a possible overdose, Kayla was astounded. Kayla noted, her pulse is weak, her breathing is shallow, and her body temperature is incredibly low. This was discovered on the scene. Perhaps you can determine what it contained and administer an antidote to the victim. Kayla was given a syringe by Jada when she intervened. It might be our only hope, Kayla said. At the nurse's station, Jada and Rafe waited until Kayla returned with news. Because the syringe contained a highly potent sedative, Kayla reported, we administered another drug to reverse the effects. Rafe and Jada sticking around for the update puzzled Kayla. Have either of you two checked your messages? Before telling Jada and Rafe what John and Steve had uncovered regarding Abe's abduction, Kayla realized. Marlena hurried over to the Kane apartment, and after seeing that the door was opened, went inside. Charlemagne? Why are you in this place? Whitley sputtered, thinking Marlena was a body and soul character. Whitley brandished an umbrella's pointy end as a warning to Marlena. This air is dangerous? Marlena gave advice. You suppose I am unaware of that? Whitley retaliated. Marlena made an effort to persuade Whitley. Give me a chance to help you now. Marlena pleaded. You asked me for aid a long time ago. And I failed you. What the heck are you talking about? Whitley gave a reply. Marlena said, You were in such pain since your husband had passed away and you felt that you were to blame. Whitley said, This is my time to rectify it. He died alone. They all died alone. Marlena emphasized. It was a terrible, tragic accident. Whitley softened after recalling their therapy sessions and started to give Marlena the umbrella. But Jada stormed into the room just in time with a revolver drawn, and Rafe followed shortly after. Who are all of these people? Aid questioned. Jada was warned by Rafe that firing the gun wasn't safe. Whitley concurred and then threatened to use a lighter. But Marlena wouldn't leave a former patient who was in need of assistance. Whitley prepared to use the lighter and began to pray. However, Abe suddenly grabbed the nurse's hands, calming the situation. After learning that Lani was receiving treatment there, Eli, Polina, and Kayla all hurried over to the facility. Kayla reassured Polina and Eli that the account wasn't just a drug-induced delusion by confirming that Liney had succeeded in revealing Abe's survival. Eli was soon able to have some alone time with Lani after Polina and Kayla left. You just couldn't wait for the backup, huh? Lani was teasingly pressed by Eli. Polina began to share the good news as Theo, who had earlier gotten a mysterious phone call from Kayla, soon arrived. However, Marlena abruptly entered the room with Abe, who was in a wheelchair. Abe didn't appear to recognize Theo or Polina, but they were both too delighted to notice. Thanks for watching if you liked this video. So please don't forget to subscribe my channel and don't miss any updates.